Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we do integration on generalized surfaces. And indeed, in today's part 41, we will talk about the sets we can measure and the sets that have measure zero. However, before we start with these definitions, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, you can download the additional material with the link in the description. Okay, and then I would say, let's start with the things we already know. Namely, if we have a single chart of a manifold, we can already do the integration in it. This means, for a set A inside U, the integration already makes sense. The only thing we have to do is to look at the corresponding image in Rn. So if the set is called A, what we need to know is H of A. And then for any volume form omega on the manifold, we can define our integral. We just need to use the integral we already have in Rn. And the short notation for that would be to use the pullback phi star omega. And moreover, we have already shown this is well defined, which means it does not matter which chart we choose here. But still, what we need is that this integral on the right hand side makes sense in Rn. And this is exactly what we will talk about today. However, before doing the general case, I think it's very helpful to look first at an example. And one we already know very well is the sphere S2. And since this one is an orientable Riemannian manifold, we know that we have a canonical volume form on it. And since we have dimension 2, we actually measure areas with this volume form. So for example, the question would be, can we measure the area of such a subset on S2? And in order to do that, we need a parameterization, and now I want to call it capital Phi. Simply because we want to use the spherical coordinates as always, and there we already have an angle called lowercase phi. Namely, it's the second angle that goes from 0 to 2 pi. Indeed, the first one we call usually theta, and the second one phi. And now we map them to R3 to describe our sphere as 2. And in fact, we have already discussed that in former videos, so you already know that we need the cosine and the sine functions. More precisely, we have sine theta in the first two components and cosine theta in the last component. So this means that theta describes the angle coming from the north pole. And moreover, phi is the angle of rotation in the xy plane. Okay, and now you see our open domain u tilde is here on the left hand side. And now we want to integrate on S2, which means we need the image of u tilde under phi. So you see, this is the same as before, just instead of the chart, we use the parameterization. Hence, on the right hand side now, we just integrate over u tilde. And then we only need to know what phi star omega is. And this is not so complicated at all, we just have to know the definition of the canonical volume form. Or more concretely, we need the representation in local charts. There, we just need the determinant of gram, and there, please don't forget, this one depends on the chosen point P. And then, we just get the standard dual basis with respect to the chart. And usually, we just call it dx1, dx2, and so on. But here, in two dimensions, we only have two. And now you might remember that this one is already calculated in part 36. In fact, you should know that the square root here is always sine of theta. More precisely, it's sine of theta for the point P that is given as this vector here. And this implies that the z component of P already determines this Kramian determinant. Moreover, I should also tell you that often for the one forms here on the right, one also uses the names for the coordinates. So in this case one would write d theta and d phi. However, important to remember here is that these represent one forms on S2. So abstract differential forms on the upper level. I emphasize this because it's also very common to use the same names for the lower level. Hence the lower level now means 
that we work in R2. Therefore, instead of P, we would have an input in R2, so let's call it P tilde. And now please recall the last video to see that the Carmen determinant is not changed under the pullback. The only thing that changes is the input, so instead of P, now we have to use P tilde. And now we know P tilde is just a vector in R2, so here given as theta phi. The first input comes from the interval 0 to pi and the second one from 0 to 2 pi. Hence, in this case, the coefficient in front of the volume form is simply sine of theta. And that's all we need to know because the standard volume form in R2 is simply the determinant. So here we have the 2 times 2 determinant, so we have it with two inputs. Okay, and now you see, here we have our omega and there our phi star omega. And now to add some confusion, this determinant here is also often denoted by d theta wedge d phi. Of course, this also makes sense if we use theta and phi as variables in R2. However, in contrast to before, these are now one forms in R2. At first glance, this looks conflicting, but usually this is not a problem at all, because we always know on which level we work. And therefore, you often see very short notations for the canonical volume form. So for example, for the upper level, you see that omega is equal to sine theta times the two one forms on S2. If you see that, you recognize it's not the correct notation at the point P, but everyone understands it. However, then the result is that the same notation can be used for phi star omega as well. The only difference there is that the differential form at the end represents the determinant in R2. So there you see, some typical identifications are always used, so be careful which one is on which level. But as I've already told you, usually they don't make any problems at all. And with that, we are ready to go back to our abstract integral of the volume form omega. And there we go over the whole image of u tilde under phi, which means we almost cover the whole S2. Indeed, if you look at the parameterization, you see that there's only a little bit missing. So maybe this is something you can visualize here on the sphere. And then you see that the points we don't hit with the parameterization just form a line on the sphere. And these are the only points we ignore here in the integration. And therefore, I would say, let's do the calculation. So there we go to phi star omega, and I would say we can already replace u tilde. This one is simply the interval 0 to pi times the interval 0 to 2 pi. And by the long discussion from before, we already know what phi star omega means. So essentially, we just have a two-dimensional integration with sine theta in it. And by using Frobenius theorem for integration, we can rewrite this with two one-dimensional integrals. So we could say first we have the integral from 0 to pi and then the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Hence sine theta stays inside and we first integrate over phi. And then afterwards with respect to theta. And now you should see these integrals are really simple to solve and what we get out is just 4 pi. Hence, we get the whole surface area of the sphere S2. So this means the line we have omitted on the sphere does not matter for the integration. Therefore, we say that the part that is missing here is a set of measure 0. And a common name for such a set is null set. We can simply omit such a set in the integration because it will not change the result at all. Okay, so now after this long example, we are finally ready for the definition for the integration. So here we will fix the notions measurable set and null set. For this we will need the same assumptions as always, so an orientable n-dimensional manifold and a volume form. And now you know, for the integration we usually just work in one chart, but here we can already generalize this idea. So for example, the set we want to integrate could be bigger than the set U. So let's call the set A and then we are only interested in the intersection with U. B 
because this is the only thing where the chart UH can help us. And then obviously the idea would be to use a lot of charts to cover the whole set A. And now for A we can introduce the new notion of measurable. And this is not so complicated if you already know what it means in Rn. Because we call it measurable if the intersection in the image is measurable. In other words, we just talk about the set here in the image in Rn. And there the notion measurable is read in the typical measure space we have for the standard Lebesgue measure. So roughly speaking, this just means that we can measure the volume, the generalized volume in Rn of this set. So with respect to the Lebesgue measure, it's measurable. If you want to know more about this concept in Rn, you can watch my measure theory course. There I explain the whole concept and why we need it in all detail. However, the conclusion there is that most sets we use are measurable, so it should not be a problem in calculations. On the other hand, we still need the notion, because otherwise the general integral would not make sense. And now obviously we want to have this property for every possible chart uh. So no matter how we cover the whole set A, we can always form the integrals in Rn. And there we have it, this makes the set A measurable. And now on the other hand, we call A a null set if the measure is equal to zero. This means the generalized volume of A should be given as zero. Therefore, what we want is, if we push this intersection to Rn, we want here a Lebesgue measure of zero. And as before, this property should hold no matter which chart UH we choose here. Now these two definitions make our life already simpler, because our definition of the integral inside a chart can be extended. So first, please remember, the integral on the manifold inside a chart is now well defined for every measurable set A. So in other words, this symbol integral of omega over A is well defined for each measurable set A, which can be found inside a chart U. In other words, if we find a very big chart on the manifold, we can calculate a lot of integrals already. However, we can also extend this to bigger sets if we know that the difference is only a null set. This is exactly what we have seen in the example, so the integral here can be defined by the integral where we subtract a null set n. Of course, on the right hand side we need the same as before, so we need that b without the null set lies inside a chart. And now this definition we can already use to define the integral of our sphere S2. In fact, the whole calculation is already done and we know the result is 4 pi. And moreover, we also see that we can integrate all possible measurable subset in S2 now. So the problem of integrating on the sphere is solved for us. But of course, we also want to tackle other manifolds, so it would be nice to have a general theory for sets that don't lie in a single chart. And here we have already seen the idea, we just have to split the set up. So it's not so complicated, but it's some technical work we have to do. And there I would say, this is something we should discuss in the next video. So I really hope we meet again, and have a nice day. Bye bye.